Okay, welcome back to part four of the Midlife Crisis series, where today we are going to be talking about Uranus opposing your natal Uranus. Usually happens age 42. And like I said in the last video, it leaves you with this energy of feeling like, get out of my way. Uh, there's got to be more than life. I'm going after it now. And the purpose of this is to get you to do things in your life with more of a personal meaning. Um, it's maybe like a last chance. I, I hate to say it that way, but like a second chance or a last chance to go back and do what you wanted to do with life, um, but in a more personalized way. Remember in the overview, I mentioned that in our younger years, prior to this energy, in our younger years, a lot of times, we are motivator, motivated, whether consciously or unconsciously, to do things because we're trying to meet external demands, friends and family, societal expectations. Um, she's back. I tried to get rid of her. She's coming back. I hope y'all enjoy this. <laughs> Okay, when that doesn't work out, doing it the way that other people told you, like this is what you need to do to have a happy life, you need to go to school and get in student loan debt, and you need to work hard and work like a dog, and you know, you need to fill in the blank, okay? And then you find yourself in your 40s where you're like, yeah, that, that didn't work out too well. How about if I just do what I wanna do, okay? Rather than trying to do this formula that they say is going to make me happy, why don't I just go do what I want to make me happy? Um, and so it's less about meeting the expectations of others during this time, more about having this internal meaning for yourself. And yeah, this could bring about radical changes, um, at least in the eyes of others who see you as maybe you're not doing what they think that you should be doing with your life. Um, you know, what they suppose you ought to be doing, right? They're, they they worked the program, they're prescribing to you how it needs to go down. And, you know, maybe you tried it and it just didn't work out. It's not you, it doesn't fit you, you don't wear it well, you don't want to wear it. I you know what I'm saying. I just side note, I remember, you know, I wanted in my early 30s to have a big, beautiful home. And to some degree, I still admire that kind of thing, but after living in a big, beautiful home, I'm like, my God, it's a lot to clean. It's a lot of responsibility. And now in my 40s, I'm looking at tiny houses and things like that because I'm like, I don't need all of that. You know what I really would like? I'd prefer to use my money to travel, you know, rather than being a slave to um, this piece of property, you know? And so again, it's just like uh, the contrast of what you what you thought was a happy life, um, whether it was your idea or other people's idea that they put in your head versus, you know, you coming to the point of saying, you know, that's, that's not what I wanna do with my life, whether people understand it or not. So there could be some kind of circumstances or events um, and people that rile you up, that kind of awaken your rebelliousness and being unconventional because there's a desire for freedom with Uranus. I mean, we're talking about Uranus supposing natal Uranus, right? Um, so something gets riled up here where you're like, I'm breaking the shackles off. I'm cutting loose of this. Whatever it is that you felt held you back, if it was other people's expectations, out you go out of my way. I've got to go do what, you know, it's right. You got to get to a point where you're like, this is my life and I have to live with the choices. Other people don't. So, um, it is an important point in a cycle of individuation, becoming an individual. And this could come about through conflicts that enable you to see another viewpoint that encourages you to have more personal freedom. And obviously it can bring about conflicts where people are like, no, um, you stay in our box. You do what, what, what we said. Um, wh why, why are you changing? You always did it this way. What do you mean you never really wanted it that way? Or, you know, fill in the blank. People can get conflicting with that, with you trying to 
break free. Um, so how this could manifest is through career changes, um, could be positive, you know, doesn't have to be negative. And I got to say that, by the way, you know, in the previous videos I released, I mean, some of my stuff was pretty dramatic, okay? You, it does not have to be that dramatic for everybody. Um, because number one, you got to look at the houses being impacted. Um, some houses are more difficult than others, right? I mean, I had a lot of uh, impact to my eighth house, which is arguably, you know, pretty tough, okay? Uh, I went through an existential crisis with all of this, but um, there are easier houses for, you know, for you to, to have impacted, and, and it might not be so hard as me. You also have to look at the your natal chart as well. For example, when I had my eighth house getting impacted, um, in my natal chart, I've got some nasty stuff. I've, I've already got an opposition going between Mars and Saturn in my eighth house. So not pleasant stuff going on. And then you got to look at the entire chart um, as a whole, you know, that you're, as you're going through this transit, what other things are going on that are triggering um, the the planets and the houses involved in this opposition okay by the way you know a professional astrologer can help you with this if you're interested you can contact me you know I haven't even mentioned that this entire time um, and hadn't even planned on it but I just thought well if you want somebody to kind of really get into the layers of how this is really hitting your natal chart and your current transit chart, um, I am available for that advice. But back to the reading, not the reading, getting back to the video, um, career changes could be a manifestation for better or worse. Uh, leaving a spouse, this is where I see, you know, people leaving a spouse for maybe a younger one or buying that racy sports car. You know, we see that kind of thing happen with the midlife crisis energy. Um, or maybe you just take some kind of, some form of irresponsible adventure seeking. Uh, you get yourself involved in, in a way to get your youth back. Not so positive, right? My advice is that as much as it is humanly possible when you're going through this, try to quiet your spirit. Not easy when we're talking about Uranus because Uranus wants to cut loose. But if you can, try to quiet your spirit as much as you can and figure out what is it that you really want to do. I mean, before you really give yourself permission to, you know, cut loose, no holds barred, um, what is it that you want to do? What is it worth cutting loose for? Or what you could do is wind up finding yourself you know, going after something that leaves you with an empty life and not understanding why, right? Like in the in the situation where somebody deals with this energy by getting a younger um, spouse, uh, you know, or getting this and or getting the new racy sports car, you know, what happens is they find themselves in a relationship with someone who doesn't really love them they love their money or, you know, they, with the car scenario, they're, you know, in it into car payments they can't afford, debt bondage, and people are looking at them like they're crazy. I mean, people are looking at them like, <laughs> look at this guy or woman driving this hot rod, like Whatever, fill in the blank. I, I hate to stereotype, but you know what I'm you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Okay, so in real life, how did this work out for me? I'm gonna tell you um, I was going through this 2018 through 2019. And Uranus was in my sixth, sixth house and it was opposing my twelfth house. So um this is about the mundane versus the spiritual. Really, six houses, the everyday activities. Um, Twelfth house is more, you know, the hidden realm, the spiritual realm. So during this time, I, um, you know, I had gone through the energies that I had already explained to you in the videos leading up, right, to this 
um, videos two through three, okay, two and three. And at this point, given everything I've been through, um, I, I am starting to think, you know, I should probably become more judgmental about who I'm surrounding myself with and what I give my time to. And I kind of talked about that a little bit in the last video. Um, but I started taking a closer look at where was the misalignment of values, right? Like the spiritual values in my day-to-day -day life. Like how was I bringing heaven down to earth, okay? How was I living in my spiritual life, um, living, out, living out my spiritual life in my everyday life, okay? My spiritual values. How was I making that manifest in the day-to-day -day mundane world? Um, and I realized that um, I have all these ideals but I had aligned myself with people who really didn't share those ideals, right? It was back to the idealization, which is kind of 12th house, uh, versus what's really going on here? What's the truth here? What are the sober facts? Like the analysis, the final analysis, sixth house, you know? Uh, and I, I just really cut myself off. Once I realized, you know, it's not that people are bad, it's just that, um, maybe I had gotten into alignment with people for shared, what I thought were shared spiritual beliefs. But in reality, um, in my day-to-day -day life, they were not going to support where I wanted to go um, with my life, um, spiritually or otherwise. I started feeling that I had outgrown some of these connections, that I was out of step with them, with, with um, maybe faith that I had shared with them in the past, beliefs, lines of work. Um, I just started, um, I, I kind of, I'll be honest with you, I really went in Hermit mode, which is very sixth house, very 12th house as well. Very much went into Hermit mode during this time. And um, pulled back and decided I'm going to pour into myself and I that's you know about the around the time that I had was um, I went full time with this channel so you know I had mentioned I think in the last video that I was working a little job in the middle of the night and doing my business during the day well by this time 2018 through 2019, I completely left that little job and I went completely um, full time with my business. And I was working like 60 hours a week by myself as a solopreneur and had just completely disconnected from working for others. And investing in anybody who was not supporting me with where I wanted to go and grow in my life. And it was kind of hard. There was a lot of the, the line of work that I do kind of isolating, right? Um, and and it, particularly the spiritual content that I was putting out could, could be very polarizing uh, where there was a bit of a crisis within myself of, okay, this is where my spirituality has evolved for lack of better wording and there are people from my christian background who can't really connect with me on that level they're not going to go and grow in that way with me so um i just started pulling back even more yeah it's hard because you you start recognizing that certain people are not going to support you and um, you, you, you want them to, and you want it to work out. Um, and there's a, a fear also of family or friends or rejection saying, oh, you wanna do this with your life now? I mean, this is not who we've known you to be. And um, also fear, fear of people uh, 
going online, like I would kind of hide my work and my pup and my private offline life. I didn't want people to know what I was doing online um, because of the rejection and the um, polarization of, you know, anytime you do any kind of work that's spiritual or political, it's very polarizing. And so I was very kind of hush hush about it. But um, anyway, it all worked out. It all worked out because I just tried to honor myself. And I've been saying this throughout the entire series that you've got to really get in alignment with your true core needs, wants, values, and anybody who's not in alignment with them, hard as it might be, and I'm telling you this is really hard in some cases, uh, you, you're going to have to kind of gently let loose of this type of stuff uh, these these connections, I should say, um, and some of you don't want to hear it. And I'm going to tell you, um, the more you hang on to misalignments uh, with your relationships, your connections during this time, the the more it's going to wear and tear on you. It's it's probably harder to stay with something that is inauthentic to you than to. Uh, switch gears into something that is more authentic for you and let the chips fall where they may and if people don't like it or if you can't you know they're like well we're not going to be friends with you anymore well bye you know happy trails to you you know what i'm saying i want to say also just very briefly you know a reminder with the houses and when we're dealing with oppositions um, you know you're gonna be dealing with say one and seventh house where it's self versus others important others like business partners marriage partners people that your lifelong connections okay one versus seventh house uh, would be for some of you dealing with this opposition. It could also be two, uh, second house versus eighth house, personal versus shared resources. Third and ninth houses have to do with learning versus understanding, right? Facts versus beliefs. And then fourth and 10th houses have to do with your origin versus your destination, right? It's like the home versus the career, the mother, versus the father, right? The nurturer versus the disciplinarian. Uh, fifth and 11th houses have to do with uh, creations and legends. So, um, you know, fifth house is like what you're creating, whether it's children or projects or fun times or dating relationships, romance versus that 11th house, the ideals, the ideal partner, the soulmate, you know, um, the aspirations, the dreams, the ambitions, the pie in the sky type stuff, the friend groups, um, and six versus 12 house as well. I kind of should told you about that with my example, the mundane versus the spiritual worlds. So next part five, we're going to talk about your second Saturn opposition. And yeah, that usually happens around age 42 as well. So yeah, this is kind of a, a big lesson in life. And you usually come to this energy where you're like, oh my God, who made this big mess? Who made this big mess? It's cleanup time, karmic lessons, gotta figure out, um, get some structure to life that is actually empowering, you know, not, not hindering you, but um, helping you to have some stable foundations in life, have some structure in life that actually empowers you rather than hinders you. All right, and uh, if you wanna catch that, it'll be in the next video, but if you missed the last one, the link is here, and the next one, when it's ready, will be over here. Till next time, wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.